All right, so in this video, we're going to work through and find the integral of the arcsine of x. So arcsine, remember, being the inverse function of the sine of x. So this isn't one of the standard integrals, so we're going to have to use one of the techniques of integration to help us do this. And of our options, we've got uh, substitution. Well, there's nothing really here to substitute. We've got integration by parts. So let's have a go at that approach. So to achieve this, I'm going to let u equal the arcsine of x. Remember, we need two parts. So here is u. I'm going to let dv equal dx. So here's our second part. Okay, let's take the derivative of u. So du with respect to x, du on dx. Now from our last video, we found the antiderivative, or the integral, of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared equals the arcsine of x. So then it follows the derivative of the arcsine of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I'm going to separate the differentials now and say du is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Actually, let's write it as dx over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the integral of dv is simply v, and the integral of x is equal to x. So the rule for integration by parts is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So therefore, the integral of the arc sine of x dx is equal to arc sine of x by x, so u times v, minus the integral of v, which is x, times du, which is dx over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So just these errors showing the flow of the multiplication. Okay, so if we now simplify the expression on the right-hand side, we'll have x by the arc sine of x minus the integral of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. So we have this second integral to deal with now. And it looks more complicated than it is because we can use a simple substitution for this one because the numerator here, x, is already related to the derivative of the x squared term here. So what I'm going to do is let g, we've already used u and v, so I'm going to use the letter g, equal to 1 minus x squared. Then taking the derivative of g with respect to x, we have negative 2x. So I'm going to rearrange this to be negative one-half dg equals x by dx. So let's just consider the integral of x over 1, x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And if I make the substitutions, the integral becomes the integral of negative a half dg. So that takes care of the x and the dx over the square root of g. So that takes care of the term in the square root, in the radical. Take the half out of the front, the negative a half out of the front, by the integral of, let's write 1 on the square root of g as g to the power of negative a half, and the dg remains. So we simply use the power formula. We've just got a simple power integral here. So the constant half remains, and the integral of g to the negative a half, we add 1 to the index, which brings it to positive a half, and divide by the new power, which is a half. So it equals to b, g to the half, sorry, negative g to the half, with the half and the half cancelling out. And that, of course, equals then the negative of 
1 minus x squared, with g being equal to 1 minus x squared, to the power of a half, which simply equals negative of the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so we're nearly done. So the integral of arc sine of x dx is equal to x by the arc sine of x minus negative the square root of 1 minus x squared. And of course the double negative becomes a positive. And finally, let's not forget the constant of integration plus c on the end. So there you have it, we have just derived the integral of the arc sine of x, so hopefully that matches what you see in tables of integrals. And let's just confirm this result graphically as well. Alright, so on this chart, this orange curve is the arc sine of x. Let's label this as little f of x. And this turquoise curve here is x by the arc sine of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And let's call this big F of x. So in this instance, I've let the constant c equal 0. So we're just going to visually compare the gradient because um, this arc sine of x should be the gradient curve of this primitive function here. And as we can see, the domain of the turquoise curve is from negative 1 to 1, so the same as the arc sine of x, but the range is from 1 to pi on 2. So on the left-hand side of the curve here, the slope of this curve is negative, and it is negative pi on 2. So remember here, this is df on dx, and it's equal to negative pi on 2. And we see as we move to the center, the slope here, df dx, is equal to 0. And as we move to the right, the slope becomes equal to pi on 2. So visually, so far it makes sense just by comparing three slopes of the curve. But as you can see here, from the left extremity, as we go right, we have a quite a sharp increase in the gradient until it becomes more or less constant towards the center point. It remains relatively constant until we get to the right extremity where it uh, increases more rapidly again. So thus again we're confirming visually that these two results make sense. We're confirming that this is the antiderivative of this. Okay, so we'll leave it here for this video, and uh, if you found it helpful, give me a like, share it on social media with your study mates, and make this channel famous. Ask me any questions below, and I'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you. Subscribe to the channel for more videos that'll help you with your math studies. And for now, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.